Hello, this is the Excel macro demonstration to take a look at basically what you can do with programming that might not be Python but still might be quite useful and in a somewhat different language. So, here's the situation. Let's say that we started life off as working as a peon and we've got some sort of type of process where we need to import data from the web, create a chart, and we have to create a whole bunch of these from different data sets every day. Now, just about any job could need to do this, and really the data could be anything. But in this particular case, we're going to work with stock data because it's easy to come by during the web, and most people are fairly familiar with it. Now, if we have to create these gra graphs every day, our job is going to be kind of boring, and it could be rather error-prone. Uh, you're doing the same manual repetitive process over and over again. It takes quite a while to do all the formatting, and we would really like to manage to speed this up. So, what we're going to do is actually write a small program to be able to do this automatically for us. And we're thinking, you know, hey, we took this uh, Professor Craven's programming class, maybe we could do something that way. But we didn't really learn how to do that. But you don't need to let that stop you, uh, because there are all sorts of tools out there, and we can just play around with and try to learn a little bit about how to put stuff together. So here's the deal. We've got Microsoft Excel right here, and Microsoft Excel can actually be programmed. There's a whole programming language behind it called Visual Basic. We want to take and have this automatically open up a new file, import the data from the web, and create a chart for us. So here's how we do it. First off, this initial file is going to hold our program. But because the program doesn't appear in all the different cells, it appears somewhere else, it's easy to get confused behind which file is our program and which are the new files that our program is creating. So I'm going to type in here, this is our Excel macro program, just so we know that this particular sheet has our program in it. Then I'm going to save it. I'm going to go underneath File hit save as and here's pretty important by default we save an Excel workbook which does not have macros we want to save an Excel macro enabled workbook so I've got that and I'm gonna call this thing chart maker I call it chart maker 2 because I've already got a chart maker program and there we go I've saved our chart maker program that was pretty easy to start off with now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to record all the actions that we take in creating a new graph. So I'm going to go underneath the View tab, and you'll find underneath the View tab is a Macro button. You can pull down the Macro button and select Record Macro. Pretty important, once you start recording this macro, it's going to record everything you do. So this is not the time to go goof around and start playing around with other Excel functionality. Don't do anything except what you want to have recorded. Okay, what are we going to call this macro? I'm going to call this macro create chart. And you'll note I did not use a space. What I'm actually doing is creating a function. And a function has the same sort of limitations on the name that we have in Python when we create a function or a variable in Python. I can't have spaces in it. It can't start with a number. Same limitations. So I've got create chart. Click OK and now I am being recorded. So the first thing I want to do is go underneath file and create a new blank workbook that will house the data and it will house the new chart that we create. Okay, so now we've got two workbooks open. One that's going to have my program in it and is recording right now and this one, book two. So we've got that. Now we want to import the data from the web. So when we do that, we can click the data button, and we can do from web. And I'm just going to type in this address. We could just browse to it if we wanted, but just to be quick, I'm going to type in the exact location since I happen to know what it is. I'm going to go to finance.yahoo.com which has all sorts of data available for us to download. There's a subdirectory called Q, I assume short for quote. 
slash uh, HP. I have no idea what HP stands for. And then a question mark and S, the symbol, is equal to WFC. This will pull the Wells Fargo Corporation stock ticker. Click go. And I'm not going to resize the window because uh, weird things happen in this program when you resize the window. All right, right here you'll see our table of data for the stock prices. And there's a little yellow button next to it. And when I cover over it, you can see the whole thing is selected. I don't want this and I don't want this, but I do want this table with all the data. So if I click on it, that little button changes from an arrow to a green checkbox. I'm ready to import. So I click import. Great, where do I want to put the data? I want to put the data right here in cell A1. Click OK. I'll wait a little bit, goes out to the web, brings in the data, and boom, there goes my data. Okay, so I've got the data in here. The next step that I need to do is graph the data. I want to select all the data that I need to graph. And if I do it manually with a mouse, it really doesn't work well as far as a recording macro type of thing goes. So I'm going to use a keyboard. Right now, you can't see it, but right now I'm holding down the control key and I'm holding down the shift key. And with the control and shift key held down, I hit the right arrow. Once I do that, it selects everything over to the right and stops. Now I'm going to hit the down arrow, still with the control and shift key held down. Goes to the bottom of the chart. Now, I don't actually want closed price adjusted for dividends and splits, so I release the control key, still holding down the shift key. I hit the up arrow once, and now I can let go of the shift key, and I've got all the data that I want to have graphed, graphed. Okay, so now I've got the data selected. I actually need to create the graph. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to click the Insert tab, from the Insert tab, I'm going to select Line, and I'm just going to take this first line chart here. Well, there and behold is our chart, but it's like right in the middle of the data. I don't really want the chart right in the middle of the data. I would prefer it on its own sheet. So if I go over here to the right, there's a Move Chart button. I'm going to click this, and I'm going to select I want a brand new sheet for my chart, then click OK. Ah, uh, this is much better. Okay, so I've got this chart going on here, but actually the high, low, close, all of this is like near zero, and I can't see it because the volume is so high. The only thing I want to graph is actually the adjusted close. So I'm going to right-click on the chart and do Select Data. From here, I'm going to select the first item, and I'm going to hit Remove, the Open, the High, the Low, the close and the volume, but I'm going to leave the adjusted close. Click OK. There we go. That is how I want the chart to look. Except uh, the title really shouldn't be adjusted close. I'm going to take this. I'm going to call this WFC. And get rid of this legend. I don't really want the legend here. And at this point, I could do all sorts of things. I could add an axis over here on the left or on the bottom. I could do all the styling that I might want to do with my chart right here and then have it automatically apply to each and every chart that I create. If it takes you 10 minutes to tune a particular chart, you can save 100 minutes by automatically programming it just for 10 charts. And if you do that every day, it can really make a huge bit of difference. I mean, it could make a lifetime's worth of work difference. Okay, so I've got my particular chart set up here. Uh, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time doing extra little doodads onto it. So at this point, I'm going to say that I'm good. I'm going to stop the recorder. And to do that, I click on View. Then I'm going to go into Macros, and I'm going to click Stop Recording. Okay, now the macro stopped recording, and I no longer need this particular window. So. I'm not going to click this button because that closes all of Excel. I don't want that. But I'm going to click on this button down here, which clicks the particular document that I've got open, closed. I do not want to save book two. Okay, that should return you back to your Excel program. All right, it doesn't look like much of a program, but it's there. 
And if I go underneath the Macros button, View Macros, I will see there's a Create Chart Program. And if I click Run, it'll pause for a little bit. And bingo, there's our chart automatically recorded for us. That's pretty cool. If you're working with earlier versions of Microsoft Excel, you'll actually need to do a little bit of debugging. 2010 is pretty smooth, thankfully, but 2007, it'll stop on some different lines that you actually need to delete before you can go on. And there's details in the class notes on that. All right, so that's neat, but that only does the Wells Fargo ticker. How do I adjust my program to work with other tickers? Let's go back underneath View tab, look at Macros, and select View Macro instead of Record It. And I'm going to edit the macro instead of Run It. Here is our macro that's recorded for us automatically. Not too long, but it's actually pretty similar to types of programs that we created before. This whole sub create chart is just like the functions that we create in Python, except with Python we use def, create chart, and then a colon. Really, not a whole lot of difference there. This workbook stock dot add, we often do things like, uh, particularly like my list dot append. This is the same thing, workbooks dot add. And these are all parameters. If there's a whole lot of parameters with a function, you can do this with uh, Visual Basic. And take a look at this. We've got query tables, we've got names, we've got true false statements, we've got numbers, we've got numbers as strings, we've got all the same sort of stuff that we talked about in our class. And this ticker symbol we've got right here, hey, take a look at look that. What would happen if we change that? Hmm. Oh, but as we go through this, here are functions that do things. Again, this is a particularly variable in a package. We'll work more on the whole like active chart dot when we go into objects and what that means. More functions that are being called and the end of our whole definition of our function. So let's modify this a little bit. Let's say we wanted to pull Hewlett Packard. So I change the WFC to HP. Then I go up here, that little green arrow. I click this to run it. It thinks for a little bit. And it's done, although I need to switch the window here and not look at the code. There you go. Whoop. Uh, we still titled it with WFC, even though this is Hewlett Packard data. So, uh, do we want to change changes to this? No, we don't. Go back here. Let's bring our Visual Basic stuff back. So, that's a good point. Not only do we need to change this to HP, we need to change this down here. We need to use a v value more than once. Well, in order to do that, we need a variable. And why don't we just abstract this out so this function works with any symbol. I'm going to pass in a parameter. I'm going to call it symbol. Instead of HP, I'm going to do a plus symbol. So whatever I pass into the function, it's going to add right here. This is just like the addition concatenation of strings that we've done before. Instead of down here setting this to WFC, let's set it to symbol and set this to symbol. Now in order to do this, I'm going to need to be able to call it and pass in a function. So let's create a new function. So we're going to click on modules here. I'm going to insert new module. This is a brand new module. I'm going to call this other function that I've created over here. So create chart. I'm going to say create chart and what do I want to call it with? WFC maybe. And if I run this, oh I need to give the macro a name. Hey what about that? I'm going to call this create all charts. Yeah. I need to put things in a function. There we go. 
Now, if I save this and run it, what do I get? There's my WFC again. Change this to HP. Ah, on time error. The indexing of the specified collection is out of bounds. Let's debug this and see what's going on. <laughs> this is a new bug that we didn't used to get with the version 2007 version. Uh, note here as I'm selecting the text, it assumes that there are three characters. I gave it two, right? So actually, I'm not going to worry about the format of this particular text. I'm going to delete this section. That's okay if I reset it. This is going to have the same issue. Delete it. Save it. Go ahead and select the second module here. Let's try running it now. See if it works any better. Looks like it's finished. There we go. There's our HP. I can hit close. Don't save. Close. Now, actually, I can chain these things together. Do Wells Fargo Corporation there. MSFT, and if you had like 10, 20 different tickers, you can see how much time you'd save behind doing this automatically. Now if I run this, automatically in the background it's going to do all three of them. And I can see it sit here chucking along. And look at that, I got Microsoft, I got Wells Fargo, I've got HP created in a matter of seconds. What would have taken me a long time to do manually. And the fact that it's done by a program is going to be done a little bit more reliably and that I won't have to worry about manual error when I put it together. I can go ahead and save this. There we go. So that's an example of doing and putting together an Excel macro which, quite frankly, doesn't work a whole lot different than Python programming. You just need to learn a slightly different syntax, and you can put together programs that can really aid and streamline the work that you do.